Season three is in full force and we're 3D printing more Demon Slayer katanas. So far I have Tangan's giant obnoxious cleavers, Best Boy Rengoku's katana, and even a special katana that's 3D printed using metal. Well, at first I couldn't decide whose katana to make, the emotionless little brat or the fan service, but uh, how about we just make both? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank, and today we are going to be making Muichiro and Mitsuri's Nichirin katanas. Now, two things I need to talk about in this video before we get started. This video is a little choppy and thrown together. I had some family medical problems pop up while I was going through filming this video. I didn't have enough time to dedicate to it as much as I wanted to, but I need to get the video out. I don't want to spend too much time on one project, but I promise you by the end of the video, you will understand all the little tips and tricks I used to make both of these katanas. Now the second thing is, I wasn't able to make Mitsuri's katana the way I really wanted to because of the rush I had on this video. If you've seen the anime or manga, you know her sword is this crazy metal whip thing, but for obvious reasons I made mine for display purposes only, so it is going to match up nicely with the pre-existing katanas I have, and it's going to look beautiful on the wall. So we are just going to make a normal katana, but her paint job is really fun. But before we can build anything, first we need the 3D files. Okay, first let's do the files, and we're going to go back to the place I always get most of my Demon Slayer katana. Uh, Cosmo Craft on Colts 3D. I swear he had a different name. Maybe he changed it. I'll have to check another video. But he has a beautiful collection of pretty much every Demon Slayer katana. And this is where I downloaded Muichiro's and Mitsuri's katanas. Um, they are a little pricey. I mean, $18, $15, not bad. But they have a lot of love put into them. And they build like real katanas, just like Tengen swords. Um, so these are absolutely the ones I want to print. But as always, I am going to provide you guys with a free option. And we are back with Dylan 3D print. This is actually where I got my Rengoku katana from a video a while ago, uh, right down here. And he also does have a free Mitsuri and free Muichiro file. Um, they are built pretty similar, so pick whichever ones you want. But I am going to get the uh, nicer files from Colts 3D. Now, once you open the files, you're going to see he has a lot of parts mixed in here. If you are printing this on a small printer, he even went and cut the blades up into multiple parts for you. The same with the sheath. Um, I forget what it's actually called. The suka? The saya. Something like that. He cut them up for you. However, I am fortunate enough to have an infinity belt printer, which means I can print to infinity and beyond. Please don't copyright strike my channel. Um, so the Creality CR30 belt printer, it allows me to print katanas in one full piece, which is awesome. However, you have to think about positioning. Now, where I could go and print this katana exactly like this, use a bunch of supports, I just didn't want to do it like this. I wanted to cut out a channel in the middle in order to fit some type of metal rod. And I have tutorials on how to cut parts, how to put metal rods in swords. I will link that down below. But basically, I took the sword, bisected it, and added a small channel for a small metal rod. And now this, the, the blade is in two flat pieces. I can print completely separate. This is also going to greatly help with the stability of the print. And it also had an unintended side effect that I didn't think about that we'll talk about later when we're putting the blade together. But this is kind of a bougie thing. Print the blade however you want. If you need to PLA weld them together and really fuse those printed parts together, check out this tutorial up here. It's how to PLA weld parts. It's just, it, it's better than super glue in my opinion, and it makes them a lot stronger. It's a great skill to have, so go check that out. As for all of the little extra bits and bobs, I am going to be resin 3D printing these on the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K. They really need to work on that name. Um, they sent me this printer to, you know, use in different projects, and this is the, um, this is another project. Now, this is Massive overkill for this printer. I didn't need to print katana parts for this. Uh, it is a much larger printer than that, but it handled the quality perfectly. Resin printing is very different than standard FDM printing. Um, I am not the guy to learn it from. I am still learning about support placement and usages and cure time and all of that fun stuff. But what's great about the size of this printer, I can fit all of the parts I need to with plenty of room to spare. And this print's not going to take that long at all. I also went and printed the uh, actual hilt, the handle parts on my bamboo P1P. Um, and I intentionally kind of let it top layer. I let it get that flat top layery irony texture because in my mind, that kind of looks like the ray skin handle that is used in traditional katanas. Um, it wasn't supposed to be perfectly smooth and flat. Uh, handles are usually made of a type of wood and then they are wrapped in ray skin. This way, the um, the suka wrap, the fabric material of the handle has something to kind of grip onto. It's, uh, it's a really cool process, but we're going to talk about the wrapping later. Let's get them printed and then let's get into the garage and start, um, start assembling them, which is the best part. Hey, so I lost a bunch of footage and now we're here on my... 
Now we're here on my workbench and we have to get these swords done in like two days because I am behind schedule and life happens and a bunch of stuff got in the way. But yeah, let me show you where I'm at with the swords and then we're gonna use a soldering iron and a Dremel to actually build these things. I have Morichiro's sword uh, put together. Everything fits pretty nicely. I had to do a lot of trimming around some of the um, the attachment parts and I definitely need to still work on some edges. Um, I had some support removal problems with the resin prints. Not that big of a deal, I'm okay with it. But I'm gonna kinda take you through the process of how I'm gonna get um, Mitsuri's sword to actually fit because right now it is completely in pieces. You can see this is one half of the blade. I really wish I had a video of the belt printer working and printing these. They printed beautifully in one piece, um, but unfortunately the belt printer is now giving me a couple problems with a new sword. I was hoping to record it, but here we are. So we have the two pieces and the reason I printed them like this instead of printing them in one solid part, I could have stood it up like this, right? Uh, totally up like that. That would have been very difficult to get the metal reinforcement rod inside of it. And now what this has also done is not only do I have an outer wall, I have two inner walls to help reinforce the piece. There's two complete sections inside of this now to give it even more structure instead of it all just being infill. Um, and honestly, it's, it's a little flimsy as you can see, but it's not bad at all. It does feel pretty strong. Once I weld this together and get everything together, it, it's gonna be fine. I mean, it was always gonna be flimsy. It's a plastic sword, but I'm okay with it. Let me start fitting things and getting them dremel together and I'll shut up and stop talking. Hey yo, it's voiceover Frank here. So this is the spot you're gonna wanna take the most time with. Because of the differences in tolerances between resin printing and plastic 3D printing and just the way you position the parts, things can fit weird. So take your time use a multitude of tools, soldering irons, uh, sanders, dremels, files, metal files go a long way, get everything to fit. And if things are fitting a little loosely, that's honestly a little bit better. As you paint things up, they're going to expand and get layers of paint on them. So if it's a super tight fit before you prime and paint everything, it's only gonna make it worse. You're gonna see later in the video, I need to actually scrape some paint off of some parts in order to get them to fit. I could have masked some parts off better, but oh well. So take your time with this. Just get everything to fit with whatever tools you have in your toolbox, literally and figuratively. Okay, so that took a little longer than I was hoping. Um, this sword is all done and welded together. It's time to start actually painting this. Um, I'm actually really happy with how this is coming out. I, I'm actually pretty stoked to paint this something new. There's a lot of pinks and blues. Um, doing the hearts on the handle, that's gonna be a little weird. There is a way for me to hopefully do that. Um, the last thing I need to do on uh, Muichiro's is weld the blade together. All I did is the same thing I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is the same thing I did on Mitsuri's, is just weld the front, um, pretty much kind of deeper weld the back so I can get good um, depth in the actual melted plastic and then super glue the inside. Obviously, I'm gonna glue it before I actually weld it. It's actually pretty weird. From welding it, um, Mitsuri's is a lot stronger and more sturdy. Like, it doesn't need the metal rod at all. You can see how flimsy um, Muichiro still is because it's not welded. So, yeah, this definitely didn't need the metal rod. I'm not gonna be running around cosplaying with this thing. It is for wall decoration. So let's weld up Muichiro's, take these both apart, get them sanded down, and we'll get some primer and paint on them. Now we've talked about sanding and priming till we've been blue in the face on this channel. I'm not gonna go back over it in this video. Uh, resin printed parts do not need anywhere near as much primer and prep work as plastic parts. So just get them smooth, however smooth you need them. I have the parts all primed and ready to go. I obviously put a lot more sanding and prep work into the blades because they are plastic. But once those were good to go, I actually hit them with a satin black because I like that more for katana blades. And then I painted all of the gold parts gold with uh, the standard Rust-Oleum metallic gold. You know, you've seen that on the channel before. I use it all of the time. For the blue, I was using a Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 sea foam, and I love how this paint came out. It's just like a nice satin look, and it was perfect for uh, Murishiro's handle. And if I'm being honest, I had way more fun painting Mitsuri's blade than I thought I would. Um, the hot, gloss hot pink was perfect for this. I love how it came out, and this might be one of my favorite katanas I've ever made. It is just so bright and obnoxious. I love it. For the next part, I could have gone and masked and painted everything with spray paint, but I just felt like hand painting it would just be quicker and easier. So I just took some model paint, um, I believe this was semi-gloss black, and I just painted in all of the little black parts on Muichiro's hilt, and it worked perfectly. Uh, in this little clip, it is still wet, it dries much, much nicer, and it matches uh, what you see on screen way better than I thought it would. 
As for Mitsuri's paint job, a neat little trick you can do since I had no gold modeling paint on hand, I took some gold spray paint and just sprayed it into a plastic tin and took a fine paintbrush and used it to hand paint. Um, you have to practice with this. It is not a 100% perfect easy art. You can have running and streaking and the paint dries super quick. But if you take your time with it, you can pretty much use any spray paint to hand paint anything you want. And the results come out pretty good. Now on to painting the katanas, their proper uh, colors. And um, I might have messed up here. So as this video is going on, you might notice that I did not paint Muichiro's blade blue. Well, there's a reason for this. Um, I messed up. When pulling reference images for Muichiro's blade and the pattern of the blade, um, I had forgotten a key detail in season three. Slight spoilers, but kind of not really because it's not that big of a deal. Really early on in season three, he breaks his katana and actually steals a katana from Yorichi Type Zero. That's not his katana. So a lot of the final battle that he's in, a lot of the reference images, even some of the statues that are sold online have him using this temporary black blade. And that's what I went with. I was under the assumption that the blade he gets in the final battle, the all blue blade, was just an upgraded version of his old blade. No, his original blade was blue too. You can see it here in this battle. Um, and then he gets the temporary blade, that is Yorichi's, and then he finally gets his upgraded blade. So I painted this entire blade um, pretty much the wrong color. Now, I don't have time to fix this. I want to get this video out, and I honestly like how this blade came out. You guys can give me your opinions at the end of the video once you see the results. But I do promise you, by the time I make my next Demon Slayer katanas, which should be um, Shinobu's and uh, Inosuke's, and I might do Kanao's, uh, that'll be all for season four. Um, I will have fixed Muichiro's blade. I'm gonna pull the blade back out, repaint it, get it that nice metallic ghostly blue. Um, I'm excited about it. I just don't have time in this video. And let this be a lesson. Always check your reference sources. Um, it, it was my fault, but I still have, like, like how the blade came out. So uh, sue me. I don't want to see you in the comments saying um, that's the wrong color because I know. Okay, now that you know why I'm painting this blade the wrong color, a uh, very simple uh, pattern to do. It was a pure straight line. Just took some frog tape, laid it down as straight and nice as possible, and then brought it into the paint booth and doused it with this Rust-Oleum metallic finish chrome stuff. This stuff covers anything. It does not matter what base color you use. It is going to cover it. Um, after it was kind of dry, it was time for the most satisfying part of this entire build, peeling the tape off to reveal just a beautiful clean line. I had a little bit more fun doing uh, Mitsuri's because there were a couple different reference images for hers. Um, sometimes she has a straight pattern on her blade. Sometimes the entire blade is pink. Uh, sometimes it, the blade is, you know, 50 feet long. It doesn't matter. But from what I could gather, the, uh, the pink to black was just a random squiggle. So I kind of just did a random pattern on a piece of tape on the desk. And then I took that pattern, cut it out, and then just transferred it onto the blade. Um, the randomness in it really just kind of lent to her. Her, uh, her fighting style, I think, especially since this blade is impossible to make. As for the etchings on the blade, I'm doing the exact same thing I did last time. I'm taking some of these Maltov chrome paint pens, um, dripping a bunch of it into a metal tin, then taking a super fine paintbrush and very carefully dripping the paint into the markings. It worked well and the symbols look really cool and they really pop on the black blade and the pink blade. Now it's time for the final assembly. You can see I already went and wrapped Muichiro's uh, katana handle. It's a suka wrap. Um, I show you guys how to do this in the Tengen 
Nichirin Katana video. Uh, so if you want more information on how to do that type of wrap, please go check out that video. This video is long enough as it is, and I can't go over all of that. But squeezing everything together, getting everything to fit, I love how this thing came out. Mitsuri's blade went together the exact same way. I slid everything together, how to scrape some of the paint off just so there wasn't as much friction. However, we need to talk about her BS handle. This Katana wrap, Suka wrap, it makes hearts. You can't wrap a handle and make hearts, or at least I don't have the skills to. So we had to get a little bit creative in how I was going to approach this. I realized in another clip that I had like chrome flakes in my hair. I don't know, I think it came from one of the katanas. Anyway, um, Mitsuri's handle, her katana wrap, is impossible. Uh, you can see in this image, it's hearts. You can't wrap fabric into hearts. So you have two options here. Um, the modeler who made this katana handle that I'm using actually included these really cool little hearts that you saw me resin print earlier in the video. And the point of those is to wrap them into the handle to kind of fake that heart effect. And honestly, I really like how this came out. The other option is to print the, uh, the free model that has the hearts kind of inlaid into it, and then you can just paint them different colors, but then you don't get that nice fabric feel. Um, I went through a couple iterations of this, and I apologize for not recording all of it. I was on a Discord call while trying to troubleshoot this. I went through four or five different wrap styles. Eventually, what I landed on was wrapping the entire thing in one pattern of this uh, teal blue. Um, I could have painted it all blue. I instead painted it all pink, just in case some cracks showed through. I think that would have looked really nice. So all of it is this really nice blue, and then I inlaid the hearts on top of it, and then I cut the suka wrap material in half, so it's even thinner than it was before. Then I just went back and forth in an alternating pattern and just hid the little sections that connect the hearts. Now, again, I could have you know cut each and every heart out and not had to do it as ornate as this, but I really like this, and it's open to a little bit of interpretation and um, I added a little bow on the end because I just thought that was cute and we're making a cute katana and I think Mitsuri would appreciate that. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. You know the whole spiel. If you wanna leave some comments down below about anything you saw in the video, if you have questions, comments, concerns, or you just wanna tell me who your favorite character in Demon Slayer is, drop some comments down below. I'm hoping you've already subscribed to the channel because I have some awesome videos coming up. I think these things came out super awesome and I'm excited to have them on the wall. Even if I got Moichiro's blade color wrong, whatever, I'll fix it. But I really appreciate you guys being patient with this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day. But before we can build anything, first we need the 3D files. Well, now it's accurate. One piece for Rengoku, one piece for Akaza.